The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe, a reading and lecture. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping. Now here he's, he's nodding out. Um, Poe was something of an opiate user and uh, there he is by his fire and um, reading some ancient books, very spooky. But right as he's nodding out, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. But tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. It's the fire, and he's staring into the fire and just seeing the embers dying and burning into the floor, which is foreshadowing for actually where the speaker in the poem, where he winds up at the end. You'll see. Eagerly I wished the morrow. Vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow. He was looking um, to hide from his feelings in his books. Hide from what? Sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here forevermore. She's nameless in the poem. She's nameless on earth. She's dead. Nobody says her name anymore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more." Now, check out his poetry here. Like, he's using alliteration all the way through this. I mean, you have silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain. Um, He's a master of that, and um, poets also will emphasize words that aren't alliterative, so purple really jumps out, and it, that um, stands for royalty, you know, his, his lost princess there. But he basically is freaking out for a little while, and he calms himself down, and says, Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly, your forgot forgiveness I implore. But the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Now, this is kind of an unreliable narrator. I don't think anybody who feels confident um, talks repetitively and, and stammeringly the way he did here. So he's kind of lying to say that he, he got his courage up to talk to whatever is behind the door. He's clearly still freaking out. Here I opened wide the door, darkness there and nothing more. Check out the alliteration. Deep into the darkness peering, long before I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and this stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, nor. That's his whispered word. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping, somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely, that is something at my window lattice. Let me see, then, what thereat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. "'Tis the wind and nothing more. "'Open here I flung the shutter, "'when, with many a flirt and flutter, "'in there stepped a stately raven "'of the saintly days of yore. "'Not the least obeisance made he, "'he didn't bow. "'Not a minute stopped or stayed he, "'but with mien of lord or lady "'perched above my chamber door. Um, "'That um, connects back to purple, "'this ideal idea that the, the raven "'is this um, purple-robed king um, "'visiting him in the night.' Um, perched upon a bust of Pallas, just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Pallas is a Roman um, writer of some kind. Um, I have to look it up again. I forgot it. Um, 
Then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. So he tries to get his humor up and he starts to joke with the raven and um, tries to make a Shakespearean joke, um, a reference to roosters and their coxcombs and says, you're not a fool. Um, and so he tries to make a joke, but the raven just says, quote the raven, nevermore. So no time for joking there, Poe. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly. Like he's like, what, what the hell, it talks? Um, Though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door with, with, with such name as nevermore. Like nobody's ever seen something like this, so I guess that's all right. So he's trying to convince himself that it's something good. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing farther than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, Other friends have flown before, on the morrow he will leave, and my hopes have flown before. So he's like, well, here's a little friend, and he's just going to fly away. And here you hear the depression kind of come out. He's like, oh my gosh, it's just another friend who's just going to leave. And he gets himself back down into feeling that word. Then the bird said, nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken. Doubtless, said I, what it utters is only stock and store, caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till all his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope, that's another word for song, right? Um, that melancholy burden bore of never, never more. So, oh, it's like a parrot who must have had a master, an owner who had terrible things happen to him one after the other that followed fast and followed faster. And it must have been the owner of this bird who always said nevermore. But again, nope. Host says, but the raven, still beguiling all my fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of the bird and bust and door, then upon the velvet sinking. So he takes out a little velvet covered chair and I'm gonna sit in front of this bird and check it out. But he looks at the chair and it reminds him of Lenore, who's never going to sit on that chair again. I betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, um, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl, whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's silver velvet lining that lamp-like gloated o'er, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamp-like gloating o'er, she shall press, oh, nevermore. And he's, gotten, he's just getting to think about this chair and like, oh my gosh, my girl is never going to sit on this cushion evermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent, or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted. In other words, I don't care if you're the devil. Tell me, and I swear by my own home, you're, you're a horror that's haunting my home. Tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quote the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Basically, you know, when I get to heaven, am I going to see her again? And quote the raven, nevermore. Dude gets pissed. Be that word that our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked, upstarting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. In other words, you lie, man. I'm going to see this girl in heaven. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quote the raven, nevermore. And the raven... Never flitting, still is sitting, still.
still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas above my chamber door, and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and a lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow upon the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. So at the end, he tries to cast the bird out and deny it, and the bird stays and does nothing but cast its shadow on the floor, crushing this dude who is just collapsed there under this depression, under this shadow, catatonic, in total shock, and there forever.